am Jesse Nickerson, and I am the media specialist at Bloomington Junior High School. How do you typically use technology to promote teaching and learning in the classroom? I like to um, find tools that the kids are interested in. Um, one, of the, one of the best things I do at the beginning of the school year is I survey the kids to see what their interests are. And then if I can find technology that plays well into their interest, that's how I like to use it. I also like to use it to kind of think outside the box. And if I have a student who's not really comfortable writing, then maybe they want to create music for me and they can use technology to do that. Or maybe they're going to create a comic. I like to give them choices with their technology. What type of technologies are available here at BJ and how well are they being used? We have, in my opinion, everything under the sun here at Bloomington Junior High School. We're very blessed. Um, our district does a fabulous job of keeping us current and up to date with all of the new technology trends. We have laptops. Every student has a laptop. We have some classrooms have iPads. We have Nooks. We have document cameras. We have Wi-Fi. Um, we have everything. And what was the other part of that Just question? How well do you think they're being integrated? Um, I think it depends on the comfort level of the teacher um, as to how well the technology is being integrated. We have some teachers who you give them a piece of technology and they take off running with it and they find ways to be very creative with it. And then we have teachers who are just kind of learning how to use it. So I think um, the use in the building depends on the comfort level. If you had 20000 to spend on technology uh, integration, and you were put in charge of spending it, how would you blow through 20000 Um Technology is very expensive. <laughs> um, but I know there are, um, I think the first thing I would do is I would try to form a committee of teachers who use technology in their classrooms. Um, I would try to incorporate as many content areas as possible. I know the new biggest, greatest thing is coding and that sort of thing, so I would try to do some of that. Um, I would... Gosh, that's a tough question. Being in my new job, I would try to find ways that I could incorporate um, literature and using technology with literature. Um, I'm not sure that that's just a big question for me. <laughs> See, I was going to say, my, my one's going to be a PD. Like PD. Send, send them all to feast. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, especially on NIU people, so they get good stuff. Describe one of your favorite classroom projects that incorporated the use of technology. So this is a no-brainer for me. That my favorite um, project that we've done, and I've done it for the past several years, is passion projects. Some people call those genius hour projects. Um, and so what the students do is they get a portion of their time, either during the day or during the week, to study anything they want to study and then present it in any way they want to present it. The only caveat is they have to use technology. So what we do is I, either myself or some of my students, give a tech tidbit of the day. And so throughout the year, the students are learning all of these tech tidbits. And then they get to use everything that they've learned into their passion project. Nice. I was hoping that's what you were going to talk about. <laughs> uh, what's the most common tech issue that you encounter, tech problem? Uh, the most common tech issue that we encounter um, is not being able to get in, onto the Wi-Fi. Um, this year, it seems like, anyway. Um, before that, I think one of the most common issues we had was just children not charging their laptops. But this year, the most common problem is they just can't get onto the Wi-Fi. Yeah, let's see. How do you stay current with all your like massive technology knowledge? That we oh, have? yeah. Well, I have very nice friends who are very geeky. Um, and I'm a geek wannabe, so I stay current through them. But I also like to attend conferences and um, I like to just research if I hear of something new. Um, for example, I was asking a teacher what they wanted to do for um, one of their reading projects, and they gave me an idea. Then I just went out and researched on my own and came up with a bunch of tools to present to them. So I researched quite a bit on my own. And then um, all of the conferences that we have, we go to the ICE conference, we go to IETC, there's the Feast for sure. Um, so lots of different conferences available. So if you've never heard of the Feast, think of it as a smorgasbord of just great ideas for you to use with your classrooms, all technology-based. All the, the feast is um, by teacher to teacher, so it's teacher trainers, um, and it's probably technology that they've used in their classrooms. And you get to sign up for sessions, so every day there'll be certain sessions that you can go to, and um, you get to decide which sessions you go to which day. One of the best things about the feast is that it's not a constant or a stagnant kind of PD. It's very fluid in that at the end of the day you fill out a survey, and if you've heard of a tool or if your school is currently using a tool but you don't know how to incorporate it into your own classroom, then you can put that on the survey and the feast will get trainers to help you specifically with whatever it is you want. So it's a very fluid kind of thing. It's teachers training teachers on all of the up-to-date technologies um, and the food is good too.
And the prizes, right? And the prizes, yes. You can't beat the prizes at the feast. Do you, do you grand ride or you're probably too busy to have time for um, it? I'm actually, there's one I'm writing now, the McDonald's one. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Uh, let's see. What social networking issues do you encounter in the classroom or in the school? Facebook, cyberbullying? Uh, teaching sixth grade for the past 16 years with technology being relatively new in the classrooms um, for the past three or four years, I didn't really experience a lot of issues with cyberbullying or social media. Um, the biggest issue I'm facing now as a, as a part-time IT teacher is games. Like That's what the students want to do. They just want to sit there and they want to play games on their laptops. That's the biggest thing I'm facing right now. I didn't really encounter, I know other people did, other teachers did, but it wasn't with um, school-bought technology. It was more so with their phones and that sort of thing. What risks should teachers keep in mind when using technology? I guess the, the biggest risk is the misconception that the tool does the teaching. Um, the, the tool is a way for teachers to get their teaching across, but by no means is it used or should it ever be used as a substitution for good teaching. Um, just because technology is out and being used doesn't mean it's being used properly. So I think that's the biggest risk is that some people think, oh, I've got this laptop, it's going to be awesome. Um, but it's just the tool. How you use it is what matters. When you say the tool, I'm just in my mind going, Zach Gilbert, Zach Gilbert. <laughs> okay, copyright. Uh, what copyright issues have you encountered? Um, copyright issues. Uh, in terms of copyright, in terms of teachers, not many yet. Um, and copyright in terms of what students can now take from the internet and use as their own, that's just, that's been happening since encyclopedias were invented. Um, not much in terms of teacher use, but students, uh, they, they, they are the generation of um, immediate information, and they don't always know how to take that information and transfer it to their own learning. Any final thoughts? Any words of wisdom to these new teachers coming up? Um, I guess I'll just reiterate the fact that the technology is just a tool. It's just something that you can use, and how you use it makes all the difference in the world. Come to the feast. Come to the feast.